What up, it's your boy Nick Incredible, man. And yes, I am back at it again. And this is New Amsterdam, Season 4, Episode 7, Harmony. And I gotta say, man, I love this episode. Let's get into it, man. I love this episode. This was another banger episode for me for New Amsterdam. There was a lot of stuff going on, but like it didn't really feel like a lot. It just felt like we were totally engrossed in everything that was going on. And it felt longer for me for some reason. It just felt like a longer episode. It felt like everything was being handled specifically. We got um, enough time for each individual thing that was going on. Everything was focused when it was on those specific cases and everything that was going on this entire episode. Like, my focus was drawn to this. This was another episode to where I sat my phone down and I just enjoyed the entire episode. I was focused solely on this episode, man. And it was great. Floyd, Dr. Baptiste, and Lynn. I hate how they mess with my boy Floyd, man. I love Floyd so much and they just aren't doing him any justice in these last two seasons, man. They just aren't. Um... I knew this was going to go this way. I, I told you guys, man, and, and a bunch of you guys called it too. I knew this was going to go this way with them feeling this type of way. Her husband isn't happy with this. It's starting to flood and, and convolute their work a little bit, if you will, because she just happened to fall in love with Reynolds. Sleeping with him would have been one thing, and I think her husband would have been okay with it. But falling in love and then it being a co-worker. She even mentioned when they were having breakfast that, you know, they hadn't discussed, like, legitimate rules about you know it being co-workers and everything is just going awry man because in the whole entire episode we see that floyd and dr baptiste are just butting heads this entire time man they're not really clicking with each other like they normally do and then they later in the episode we see that they have a full-blown argument and everybody's like oh they're down that hallway they're arguing you you should get to go stop them lynn's upset Floyd's upset. Dr. Baptiste is just mad as all get out, man. Like, it's just a bad combination right now. But the thing is, it's because of the secrecy. And we learned that Dr. Baptiste didn't really want this. He just wanted Lynn to be happy with him. And we find out that she was, but he didn't feel like she was. So now we're in this weird predicament. And Lynn doesn't want to give up Floyd. Floyd doesn't want to give up Lynn. Dr. Baptiste doesn't want to give up Lynn. So now... They got to find a workaround. And it's just it's just a really bad, volatile situation, man. And I, I'm i hoping it pans out and works out, but I just feel like it's best to just cut your losses and end it, man. At least, especially for Floyd and Lynn and, and just let Dr. Baptiste and his wife just go and live a happy life, man. Um, That aspect, we also see that uh, Veronica has kind of had her puppeteer strings and everything going on in the hospital. From the major case this episode with the ambulance um, to uh, Floyd and Dr. Baptiste arguing back and forth with each other, trying to make Iggy see patients again when he's not ready. Now, I I figured watching the episode that he would tell her that, you know, well, hey, I had this really particular incident where I, it kind of messed me up and I'm not ready to see patients. But he didn't tell her. And I feel like it's a good thing because we see that this episode, Veronica is the devil. I'm sorry, that's just what it is. And I tried to give her the benefit of the doubt a lot of times, but it's not working out. Veronica is the devil. And she's forcing forcing Iggy to see patients. And it's to the point to where he's at his breaking point. We see that he's panicking. He's 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 going crazy. Gladys trying to calm him down. It's not working. Then he talks to his husband and tell him that he's thinking about resigning from New Amsterdam because Veronica's forcing his hand. And he's contemplating it, and I'm hoping he's kind of up in the air about it a little bit because his husband told him he should do it if he really wanted to. But I'm feeling like Iggy is kind of having a moment of, you know, what well, should I, shouldn't I, should I? And then he sees this patient that Veronica forced on him, and he's completely zoned out. He's not listening to anything this man is saying. Sure, he's only talking about his wife and going to see Hamilton and everything, but Iggy has completely zoned out. He's not interested in anything that this man is saying and i feel like that's gonna really mess with iggy because we know that iggy is a good person we know that he really helps his patients and if he's not ready to see patients she she shouldn't force this on him because it's going to end up messing up things yet again 
and I don't I don't want Iggy to quit, and I don't think Iggy will quit. But if he doesn't decide to see patients or anything like that, he needs to see a psychiatrist or something. You know what I'm saying? Because he's he's going through something dealing with Chance or I want to say it's Chance, and he hasn't really dealt with it. So he needs to figure out how to deal with that, and then I think he can start to make that step forward. But like I mentioned with Veronica, she has her fingers in everything this episode. In the major case with the paramedics, she caused this whole thing to happen, forcing them to, you know, drive out of their comfort zone, rush back to New Amsterdam to bring the patients in because they're trying to compete with private hospital. I mean, private well, private hospitals and private um, paramedics. And when you can't, like Max said, that is a losing battle. They have backroom deals and all this other stuff. There's no way you can compete with them. And because of the process of that, what she done and set up and, and putting pressure on the battalion chief and everything, someone died in the process. A paramedic was hurt. Uh, the driver paramedic was hurt. Like this, this, this all could have been avoided had you not done this. And we see that Max is just furious because this has brought back a trauma towards Max dealing with uh, Georgia, along with the whole situation with him and Sharp while Luna's trying to figure out what to call Sharp. And this episode has just had Max firing in all, all cylinders. Now, he's still leaving in two weeks, but he's going to try to fix the hospital to the best of his abilities because Veronica is screwing everything up. And it's upsetting me, but I will say that, you know, Max then figuring out how to, to do the workaround and hiring ambulances straight and strictly for New Amsterdam and then having paramedics drive those strictly for New Amsterdam and bringing the patients back to New Amsterdam without dealing with any other hospital is a good idea. And even Veronica thought so. So good, good, good job on Max, man. I feel like that was a really step staple, a good staple for Max to figure out. And it's one of those things that is going to benefit the hospital. But at the end of the episode, we see that him and Luna are trying to figure out what to call Helen because we can't call her mom because, you know, mommy is in heaven. So they figured out to call her is what they call moms in England is mum. And I feel like the entire episode was a little, you know, a little, a little gut wrenching and dealing with all this trauma and secrets and everything like that. But that highlighted this entire episode for me, especially at the end when he was like, Luna's going to call Helen mum. And then she waves at her. That just, that just made me feel so good. Uh, Sharp is trying to do something for the children. And I feel like if anybody does anything for the children, I think I am all aboard. I am there. I'm willing to donate money, time, anything. If I can help kids live a better life or help them see, you know, past whatever the age they're going through with any kind of sickness or anything, like I just want to help like Sharp did this episode. I just want to help because I feel like kids are the future, you know, like, they're, they're everything, you know, if we can help them, let's help them. We're, we're the adults. So let's make it better and beneficial for the kids. And that's what Sharp was getting across, even though she cut the program, but it was in this, this massive time when COVID was piling up and everything. So her focus was kind of split, but she decided to bring back this program to help this girl with sickle cell and, you know, do the screenings and everything like that. And because she had a stroke and it could cause her to permanently not be able to have motor skills or function or anything like that and she's only 14 but she went to veronica to try to get funding for it and when she went to talk to her in that moment i knew that's the that's a deal with the devil you cannot make a deal with veronica and expect a great outcome without sacrificing something and just like i knew and held true she sacrificed the moment with the um with the cancer patients uh the the little Oh, uh, what did they call it? Something, the, the the specific beauty place or whatever to make the people that has cancer and, and, and going through all the chemo and everything to give them wigs and makeup and make them feel beautiful because, you know, they just can't do it. They don't have the energy. They're so drained. And, you know, to just make them feel like, feel normal again, she cut that funding. You couldn't find anything else in this hospital to cut. Sure, I didn't want her to cut anything, but you couldn't find anything else in this hospital to cut except for that. That's what you decide to cut. and But in that moment, I knew Helen made a deal with the devil. And it was nice to see Dr. Cow again this episode, man. Um, but like I said, I'm hoping Max doesn't leave. And we, we know every week he mentions that, well, you know, I only got a couple more weeks and then we're leaving. But Sharp isn't the only one she's affecting. I mean, she came at Bloom with like these little itty bitty threatening talks about, you know, funding and money. And, and you know, I feel like she knows that Bloom kind of done the bribe for Layla. But like she's 
bribing Bloom, well, not bribing, uh, blackmailing Bloom to bribe her to donate more money to the hospital. I mean, it's very confusing, but I feel like she knows about the whole bribe that she done for Layla. So she's going to use that to blackmail Bloom to give more money to the hospital. So in at the end of the episode, we see her calling her lawyer or a trust fund lawyer or whatever to or a state or whatever to try to figure out how she can donate more money because she doesn't want Layla to know. And I feel like that's something that we learned this episode that, you know, secrets aren't a good thing, man, because when they come out. It's a bad thing when they come out. So I think you should just be upfront with it. And I feel like Layla would definitely be upset, but I feel like she'll feel better if Bloom told her about it from the jump. But, you know, we'll have to see how that plays out, man. This is your boy Nick Incredible, man. Don't forget to smash the like button too. You can't smash any more. Comment down below, and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them and subscribe, but only if you really want to, man. Peace out. Hey, yeah, I